Welcome to Highline Excel 2016 class video number 12. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, Business 218 video 12 to 14 start file and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, last video, video number 11, was an epic video about lookup formulas and functions. For this video, 12 and 13 and 14, these are actually individual topics for lookup situations that were not in the previous video. Now, here is a common lookup situation. What if we need to look up the server name and the event in order to return status? So here's our data set server name event, we need to actually have one, two lookup values. Now remember, in order for VLOOKUP or our lookup functions to work for exact match, we need a first column with no duplicates. And boom, there's two duplicates there, three duplicates there. Ah, but look, if we have this server name and this event, notice combined together, Server name event one, server name event two. If we had these combined in a first column, we would have a unique identifier that VLOOKUP could use to look up the status. Now, in essence, there's two solutions to this. There's the helper column and the array formula. Most of the time, it is easier and more convenient to create a helper column. And that simply means we come to the front of the table if you want to use VLOOKUP equal sign, and we're going to take the server name. And notice this is table formula nomenclature. There is relative cell reference, that at symbol with the name of the column. That will always get one cell to my left. And I'm going to join it to the event. There you go. Now we will have a unique identifier, Control Enter. Double click and send it down. Go to the last cell, F2. That is looking good. Now we can simply use equals V lookup. And here, in the lookup value, we'll simply join. There's the server name. We'll join it to the event. Two lookup values joined together, comma. And the table, here's our new unique identifier in the first column. Four columns. Notice that's the table formula nomenclature. That's the actual inside entire table, comma. The fourth column is status, so we type a four. So VLOOKUP will retrieve the status, comma, and zero. Close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. Go to the last cell, F2. That is looking good. Now, I should have shown this first. If you use VLOOKUP, and let's just say we tried to look up the server name, comma, in the original table right here, comma 3, because this table has status in the third column, comma 0, close parentheses, VLOOKUP match when we're doing exact match. It's programmed. If it sees duplicates, it only gets the first one. So when I Control Enter, double click and send this down, even though this is event 2, VLOOKUP had no way of knowing because it sees this. It only finds the first one every single time. All right, now the next question is this. If you couldn't have a first column unique identifier, then we would have to, in essence, simulate this column inside our formula. Now, that means we're going to join server name column to event column. So this will be a join array operation. Now, we're going to use index, because what are we trying to get in the array? We want status, comma. And now we simply need a row number. Well, match is perfect for finding the relative position. And we're going to join server name, join symbol to our event, comma. And this is where we join the two columns. So I'm simply going to highlight server name and use the join symbol and get the event column. And now we have in the lookup array argument of match performed a join array operation. Now let's just click on this argument and hit the F9 key to evaluate this. And notice that it looks exactly like our helper column up here. So we have simulated the helper column in our formula, Control-Z. Now that lookup array argument inside of match requires control shift enter to get this to calculate correctly. So when we enter it, we'll have to remember that. Comma. 
we are doing exact match 0, close parentheses. And there it is. Inside of row number, there's the match function to deliver the relative position of server name and event. We come to the end, close parentheses. We have to use our special keystroke, Control Shift and Enter. I immediately go up to the formula bar and look for the curly brackets to verify that it correctly calculated as an array formula. I can double click and send it down, go to the last cell, F2, and it's looking good. Now, there's actually one other amazing trick we can use here. I just want to remind ourselves about index. We used this a lot last video, but we never took advantage of the fact of this array argument right here inside of index can handle array operations without Control Shift Enter. Not only that, but we also learned comma, last video, row number. If we want to retrieve all the row numbers, we tell index with a 0 or leave it omitted. So watch this. I'm going to click Escape. We're actually going to copy this entire formula and do something really crazy here. Notice we, in lookup array, have this array operation that requires Control Shift Enter. But that's a whole column, right? I can simply wrap index around it. And there it is. That array operation is now sitting in an argument that can handle array operations without using Control Shift Enter. So ready? I'm going to come to the end. And since I comma want all of the rows from that column, I put a 0, close parentheses. Now this is kind of strange. We are only using index here as an extra function to avoid Control Shift Enter. Now, if you can remember Control Shift Enter every time, then by all means do it this way. But if you don't want to have to use that keystroke, that will work. Watch this Control Enter. I look up in the formula bar, I don't see any curly brackets. Double click and send it down. Come to the last cell, F2. That is looking good. All right, so if we have two lookup values, we can either use index match index or simply index and match with this join array operation. And remember, Control Shift Enter. For both of these formulas, we do not need this first helper column. But by all means, if we want to just use lookup and join those two lookup values and add this extra helper column, that is the way to go. All right, next video, we'll actually talk about another lookup situation, not when we have two lookup values, but when we have a single lookup value and we need to return multiple items. All right, we'll see you next video.